This model certainly comes in a big box. And it's a model of the Joint Arc Power DT2000 paver. And this machine has some significance because as shown on the box, it was used on the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge. And if you look that up, you'll see that that's a very big bridge. There's some information printed on the side of the box. And one of the reasons this paver model is so large is because it's in 1 to 32 scale. It also says the model weighs over 7 kilograms, but we will see about that. Removing the box sleeve, the first thing you find is a big poster. And it's a picture of the paver on the Hong Kong Macau Bridge. There's a big expanded polystyrene tray with a lid, so we get the knife out and then we can cut the tape. And then we get a first look at what's inside. And a nice touch is that the model comes with a collector card. And it's uniquely numbered and it says there's only 140 made, at least in this red and yellow colour scheme. The rest of the packaging is high quality with black foam rubber used. And as you can see the model is well packed and there's protective soft paper. But even now you're not able to lift the model out. And that's because it is fixed to the bottom layer of foam rubber. There's a snap tie underneath and there are also some at the ends. And you can either cut off the ties. Or if you're clever you can unhook them so they can be reused. There's something that you'll often see on Chinese models and that's a piece of red ribbon which is the last thing we need to take off to remove the model. Now we can call up the giant hand cranes to lift the paver out and we've hired in ones capable of lifting up over seven kilograms but the load seems to be lighter than that. With the model out of the box there's still some bits of packaging to remove from it and there are also some bagged parts. For the assembly, the first thing we need to fit is the exhaust and that just drops in and screws into position. And then we've got small parts which fit at each end of the screed. The part hooks over and then it's held in place by a tiny small chain which you have to hook on too. And the purpose of these parts is to vibrate inclined surfaces on the outer edge of the paving. Starting underneath and there's some structure on the base plate of the paver. And there are metal tracks. The material augers are modelled in plastic. But nearly all of the rest of the screed and its support parts are in metal. Right way up and there's some texturing on the foot plates but there are no control consoles modelled. On this paver the augers are exposed at the top and the side compacting plates have small metal chains. The stabilisers have got nicely modelled hydraulic rams and the steps and handrail leading up to the cab are metal. The other detailing such as the coloured parts are in plastic. Among the nice details are the soft hoses and cables. There are sharp graphics on the side of the cab and it's good to see a detailed control console. The roof is plastic but it's mounted on a metal structure and the chromed exhaust is a nice metal part. Looking into the hopper and the belts are metal and the rollers at the front are metal and do turn. The hinges on the panels look a bit obvious but the silver colour seems accurate to the real machine. To begin with we look at the crawler tracks. And they turn quite well, although they are a little bit on the stiff side. And moving to the material spreading augers, the inner ones all rotate. And just the ones on the outer ends of the screed can't be rotated. The hold of the screed can be raised and lowered. Although it is a very heavy part, so there's no hope that the hydraulic rams can hold a pose. Because of the big weight of the screed in real life, this machine has stabilisers. And they stop the machine tipping forward when the screed is raised. A machine like this needs a lot of asphalt to keep it going so the hopper is extra large. And it's also got a telescopic part to push material forward. As you would expect the sides of the hopper tilt forward to force material onto the belt. Looking inside the model the hopper has a lever which can be raised and lowered. But it's not obvious on the review model what it actually does. The operator seats on both sides of the model can be rotated out so the operator can get a good forward look but the control console is fixed in position. The roof can also be extended by pulling out a section on either side. For transport you can lower the headroom by removing the exhaust and lowering the roof, although there is no obvious way of reducing the screed for transport. The roof also has a fold down flap, 
and there are more opening flaps that give you access to the engine areas. And underneath the flaps you can see some detailing of the engine, which is done as shaped plates rather than separate parts. If that's not enough engine for you, then you can also tilt forward the top panel. And there you can see rather more detailing with separate coloured parts. A feature of this paver is how long the screed can be. And out of the box you can extend it further at each end. And you can also vary the length of the auger extensions because it's made up of separate parts. Once you've got it fully extended you can then lock it into place. And you can do that by swinging round one of the supports. And once it's all locked up it achieves good straightness. So here is the paver fully configured. And it certainly is impressive. If you're wondering why would you want a screed so long. Well it's probably because you can get rid of the joints in the asphalt. The joints can be a weakness and here you can see that on the Macau Bridge they paved the full width of the deck. Now the box said the model weighed over 7 kilograms, but the giant hand crane suggested something lighter than that. So here it is on the Cranes Etc weigh bridge and it's about 2.6 kilograms. Now this is a 1 to 32 scale model so let's see how big it actually is. And from end to end it's about 26 inches or 66 centimetres. This is an interesting and unusual model from WSI, particularly because of the large scale. The biggest plus point of the model is the functionality, and there are lots of moving parts and flexibility on the model. The detailing and quality is not quite as good as some of WSI's 1-50 scale models, but overall this one is very good. Music 